Afro, when you're gonna tell another Sinju Tales, my family of 18 plus my mother have been waiting for so long for a story. Well, family of 18 plus your mama, do wait no longer, because your boy's about to feed you with some tales. Now, I know a lot of people have been asking for me to tell a story, and I've been waiting for a while, because if you know, at this current point in my channel, it's a Naruto flood, flash flood, actually. I love this game, and content is coming all out the poop. When this game dies down a little bit, prepare for a bunch of other content. But right now, it's the year of the storm, or at least the, the month or two. So I'm gonna talk about a story, that's a little bit personal, but at the same time, it's funny. Funny because I'm able to look at it now and laugh because of my mistakes. And, you know, I'm, I'm grown a lot since I was back then. This was around 2012. This was in 2012, for sure, when this took place. And right now, it's 2016, obviously. So there's a big year gap between how, I, how old I was and the time in general. I'm not always right. That is factual. Like, I am a human being just like you and anybody else, and I make mistakes. And I'm about to tell you my most funniest interesting mistake. I used to live in Michigan. Now, I was raised in California as I'm living in now currently. My parents got divorced. So I went with my mom to live, live in Michigan because their family's out there. So I'm like, you know what? Why not? My mom will go with you. And it was about two years I was out there. I went there my freshman and sophomore year. And then I was tired of Michigan. I was fed up. I'm like, all right, I can't take this anymore. So I decided to move back to California because the weather is nice out here. It's not shit like out there. And the people w within my age age range were a lot uh, really stuck up. You know what I'm saying? My high school had a lot of drama. Got another story from the day. But my high school is one of the high school that they featured the MTV show Made. We'll get to that later on. But right now we're gonna focus on the weed. We're moving on to the point where I'm going to go back to California for two reasons. There's three reasons, actually. Number one, to go try to see if I can rekindle a relationship of some sort with my dad. Now, I make a lot of dad jokes. I'm living with my dad now, but it's not all peachy keen. There's a reason why these jokes come from. It's the origin. Now, that's another story for also another day, a long, long time from now, but this is option one. Number two, there's this girl I liked. I liked her a lot since middle school. You know, since I was raised out here, I went to school with a lot of people out here as well. So this girl I had a crush on that I knew at this current time in my age, I had enough courage to go and get her. Number three, the weather, everything I know is out here. All those three reasons together which was why I wanted to come back out here to stay so long story short I went out here the girl I wanted I, I got her you know what I mean but I did not know what to handle that because I was a kid all that was in my mind at the time at 16 for a lot of you guys too if you've been there is sex as a guy you know what I'm saying it was hormones central for me like that was literally all that was on my mind bruh it was really bad I tore that relationship apart to pieces Long story short, me and that girl broke up. When we broke up, I realized I didn't like her too much, so it didn't hurt me that much at first. I tried to get her back, like, nonchalantly, because not only was she my girlfriend, but she was my ride to the school that was way far away from where I am now. I didn't want to lose that. I didn't want to lose what I had with her because it was pretty dope. It got to a point where she said some stuff to me that actually hurt me. Now, she told me that she didn't love me anymore. Now, I knew I didn't love her, but to hear that from somebody else, it tore me apart. I didn't know how to handle that from my current age, and I went through a really dark, dark dark phase in my life. My friends trying to help me, my friends who do weed and smoke and all that, which I, if you're about that lifestyle, I'm not, you know, hating on anybody about that for one, because I did it. So what the fuck, who am I to hate on that? I'll tell you not to do it for reasons, but I'm not gonna say, you know what, you're scum because you do that. That's just not me, that's a hypocrite, you know what I mean? So anyways, because they saw me in a bad point, they said, you know what, bruh, take this ganja and your life and your problems will go away. Life included, yes, bro. With this package deal, you will go deaf. Not death, deaf. Take two hits of this, you're gonna not hear shit. That yeah, Williams reference. But anyways, I took it. I took it for a whole month, and this is where the story begins. <laughs> so, this is December now. Like we're chilling. Uh, like I said, the whole month I smoked every day. Now, there's some parts that was really interesting, and some parts that weren't really interesting. Let's talk about the first day where I did the ganja. I don't know if you were high or ever smoked before, but if you did, you know the feeling that you get. Hunger comes later, but at first your senses are all fucked up. Like I remember when I was walking home from that day of smoking for the first time, I stopped at a stoplight while I was walking, and I stood there for at least a good 30 or 20 seconds before I realized I'm not driving. <laughs> so I went home. I got the biggest bowl of cereal, ravioli, I went on my bed, crisscross applesauce position, and watched Jersey Shore. And then when I was done, I went under my fucking bed to fall asleep. Why? Why? I don't know. I don't fucking know to this day why I did all that. Second day, um, I, I just did that. I stayed over at my friend's house because when I closed my eyes, I saw rainbows. So I was too fucked up to walk home. Just a little bit. Music was better when you're high. Food tastes better. This is how I felt at the time. You know what I'm saying? This is what I was experiencing. I was in pain. You know what I mean? The best thing that I could do to get out of this pain was lie to myself. Now, mind you, when you do weed for situations like depression, for me anyways, when the weed went away, when the, the high went away, what I was depressed about came harder. Like, it hurt me like a bunch of bricks. 
bricks. Like, it was like times 10 depression, you know what I'm saying? It felt worse than it did originally, and I know how to feel about that. So I'm like, fuck, bruh. <sighs> I gotta do it again so I can make this feeling go away. So it got to a point where I was really addicted. We didn't have any money for weed one day and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna sell my old cell phone to get some weed and this was the day where all the problems started happening, all right? I went to go sell the cell phone, my homies came with me. Now this is how I knew really that my homies weren't looking at my best interest because everybody was enamored with the weed, me myself included, and we're like, yo, let's get some weed. They weren't focused on, you know, me making a wrong choice or anything like that. We as a unit were all focused on getting high. So I'm like, you know what, let's get it. And they're like, hey, let's get it. So I sold my old cell phone. I got $60, if I'm not mistaken, 60 or $70. So I'm gonna tell you how I spent this 60, $70 in a day. First off, we went to go buy the weed. The weed was called Cabossier. That shit sounds dangerous and it is dangerous for my situation anyways, for my case. So we gonna get there. So, Cabossier was the weed of choice. And then we went to Big Five to get a football to play with and a bunch of beef jerky for my fat ass because I was high already and I wanted to eat. If you didn't know, weed makes you want food a lot. And I just wanted all of that shit. So I got the whole rack of beef jerky, put it in the little container thing, the basket we had, and yada yada, whatever. So as I got the beef jerky, the football, and the thing in the line, my homies were behind me, I noticed there was two cops ahead of me. So I told myself to be calm, be chill. My homies were telling me the same thing. All right, be calm, be chill. I went to go reach for my phone and my dumb ass took the weed that I had in my pocket. I didn't know I was holding it because I was so blown. I didn't know what, what I had in my pocket. So instead of my cell phone, I took out the weed. Cops were right there, had it in my hand. I'm like, oh, oh shit. And that's when I couldn't calm down anymore. I'm like, oh damn, what have I done? I'm gonna go to jail. In my mind, I'm just shaking all over the place, trying to stand still. What the fuck are you gonna fall for my thing for? I'm recording, bitch. Anyways, and the cops leave. I'm like, okay. Time to rest easy, yada yada. We get into the car, we're at the turning lane. Cops are going straight, we're at the turning lane. My homie who's driving nods off at the cops and says, do you want to race? I'm thinking, uh, that's funny, bruh. Eating my fucking beef jerky, you know what I'm saying? Not worried about a care in the world. Green light, he speeds off to the left. I'm freaking the fuck out. Like, I'm gonna go to jail. What are you doing? You're not thinking correctly, bro. You're gonna kill me. Turns out, I don't think they were cops. They did not chase us at all, but we were definitely going over the speed limit. So I was confused about that. They weren't chasing us. I calmed down, you know what I mean? My heart's racing, yada yada, we get to the place. When you have any type of smoke in your lungs, your heart works faster and it beats faster. So when you do stuff like weed and you don't, get a good grasp of your, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Your sanity. If you start freaking out from little things, you let the weed take over and make you go crazy, it could mess up with your heart a lot to induce a heart attack, which is where I'm about to get to. So as we get back, I had like 20 or $10 left in my pocket from the, all the beef jerky. I bought a lot of beef jerky. You know beef jerky is expensive. So I at least bought like $30 worth of beef jerky, plus the weed, plus the football, which had me with 20 or $10 left. So in my pocket, I had that. Amongst my knowledge, somebody amongst my group took the rest of the $10 in my pocket. I didn't learn that till later. Like all my money was gone at this point. And we started rapping. So I'm really high at this point. I close my eyes and see rainbows. I'm blown away. We start rapping out of nowhere. I feel my heart. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, oh shit, bro. Oh shit, uh, power walk my way home, high as fuck, not even realize what's happening. Like, hey, come back, yo, come back. They don't want my dad to see that I'm like this. I go home, tell my dad, you go to the hospital, and my heart is flaring up. It's going all over the place, I can't calm down. I'm just like, just tripping out, I'm freaking out, I don't know what to do. We get to the hospital, they, I have to tell them what happened. I tell them what happened. Um, they, thankfully the dude who was my, the, the doctor, whatever, he didn't do anything. I didn't get any cases uh, put against me, yada, yada. I was fine. They told me that my, my heart, was um I was really, what, what was the word? Panicking, my heart was going up a lot. I could have had a heart attack, that's what they warned me. This was the first warning that I should have listened. But at this point, I was still stuck into like my depression that I couldn't like let go of it just yet, you know what I mean? So I go back and I do it again. Same thing happens immediately. My heart starts going off and I knew it's not me panicking because I can't control it, like it's, it's hurting my chest how hard my heart is beating. I try to calm down, try to chill out so my heart doesn't like explode or some shit and it goes away. Next day, I do it again because I'm just that stupid, bruh. This was the day that messed me up. So I go to my homie's house, you know, chilling like, hey, you got the guns up, bruh? Let me get it. Then my heart starts going off the second I put my lips on, you know, whatever, the, the blunt, whatever you want to call it. And this one I realized, all right, I have to go to the hospital because it just happened immediately and it was hurting. Like, it was worse than all the other times. Went to the hospital. Um, It was really bad, really, really bad. And they told me that I, you know, had a mild heart attack. Normally when you have heart attacks, there's always an aftermath that happens afterwards 
for me, my heartbeat had an off beat. Like my rhythm of my heartbeat was messed up. So things like getting aroused or going running on track or doing simple things would activate like my heart beating in a certain way and it would hurt me. So I should have, what the option was that they gave me was wear a heart vest to monitor my heartbeat so then they could see how off beat it was and then like they could correct it by doing whatever they they could do to correct it I don't know what it was or what they told me at the time but instead I'm like you know let me wait it out it was like a good four months or so before my heart started like going back to how it used to be and I could you know do things again like run so that happened more of the story don't do weed not for the simple reasons of my effect because what happened to me well, most likely won't happen to you, but I'm saying this because imagine if I got caught at Big Five by the cops. I wouldn't be here like this. My mindset wouldn't be do a YouTube. It would alter who I am. It would alter my mindset of like getting success. You know what I'm saying? It, it would hurt me a lot. So I'm saying to you guys who may do drugs, who may not do drugs, learn from my story and any, any aspect of it. You know, if you're depressed, yada yada, talk to somebody. Talk to your boy. I, I probably won't listen because I can't listen to all of y'all, but you could comment it and someone's going to help you. I probably don't know. You probably shouldn't comment your problems because people are fucking rude. <laughs>